and welcome to your monthly numerology here at Readings at the Roundtable. <clears throat> I'm Jennifer, this is Jasmine, and I heard some of your comments, I listened, I paid attention to what you were saying and, <clears throat> and some of the emails I received. Some of you do not like that I do the astrology right before I do your monthly numerology reading, so I'm separating it out. It's fine. This channel isn't even a year old yet, so it's still growing. It's st we'll serve for, we're still finding our way here, so it's not a problem. It also makes me think that maybe I should implement my show Astrology Chat and put it back up on, um, up on readings at the round table because I haven't done it in a while. It just kind of seemed redundant with all the other things I was doing. But maybe this is the answer. I don't know. Let's see. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a video for all numerology, all life path numbers, and then you can go and watch your individual life path number, you know, if you choose it or if you choose to watch this video. So this is about the numerology for June and it is important. The astrology does play a part in what goes on with your particular number for the month. So, for example, if you have a three life path number, you want to you're going to want to pay attention to what Mercury is doing because that's the planet of communication, and three is all about communication. At the same time, if your life path number has a three month, this is important for you to pay attention to, um, which I believe it's eight. I believe life path eight this month is. Um, has a three month so you really want to pay attention to what mercury is doing because that's the plan of communication and mercury however is moving around a lot this month so just fyi all right so for the month of june um it's starting off really well because jupiter is conjunct the north node so this is great for abundance and prosperity this is happening on the first and second on the third we have full moon in sagittarius I know, full moon in Sagittarius, and I love it, love it, love it, because this full moon has, like, no big squares happening, nothing like, no, um, no eclipse energy, you know, this is, a, I, I feel like this is a really great full moon, I really do. So it's a very energetic moon, for sure. Um, it's entertaining without being overly emotionally dramatic. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, Mercury is conjunct Uranus during this full moon, so we could have some disruptive or sharply worded conversations or communications. So it's very, very important that we, and some people could say it's too direct or something to that effect, but I mean, I personally, I don't think being direct or blunt is abusive. But I think that we need to watch our tone and how we talk to people during this time. The full moon in Sagittarius is all about long-term goals um, because it helps us to focus our attention on what's going to happen in six months or even next year when we have our next full moon in Sagittarius. So very, very important um, that we pay attention to that. Uh, and it helps us to, I love that it helps us to look ahead because Gemini, the sun that we're in, the Gemini moons, or even like us being in Gemini sun, wants us to focus on the here and now, wants us to focus on what, what's going on today, what's happening today, you know, not like six months ahead or eight months ahead or whatever. <clears throat> this is, you know... Gemini focuses on the immediate, the here and now, and the Sagittarius wants us to focus on some long-term goals. I really do like that. We could be a little bit scattered during Sagittarius moon. You know, it's nothing too surprising about that. But the moon is trying Mars during this time. So with the moon trying Mars during this full moon, it does give us some focus, some dedication, to our goals and plans, not as scattered. On the fifth, we have Venus moving into Leo. Love this, because Leo, not dramatic or subdued at all, <laughs> but Venus in Leo is great. A little bit impulsive, flirty, and maybe even competitive. 
I know. If you're a Leo sign or if you have a lot of Leo placements, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this is attention to details. This is a very stylish time, very confident time, but this is definitely a time to be focused on our appearance. Mm, very excited about that. On the 11th, we have Pluto returning into Capricorn. Pluto has been retrograde since May, but he's finally going back into Capricorn feel like we've been there done that you know what I'm saying this is the last little bit of energy that we have from the last 15 16 years we're wringing out the last little bit of energy of Capricorn of Pluto being in Capricorn of that Capricorn energy we've gotten a taste of what it's going to be like for the next 20 years when Pluto goes back into Aquarius in January of 2024, and he's there until 2044. So we've gotten a taste of what it's going to be like to have Pluto in Aquarius, and hopefully that's sitting well with everyone. We'll see about that. <laughs> but we, but this is the last little bit, last little push of energy of Pluto being in Capricorn. On the same day, we have Mercury moving into Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini. So this is a fantastic time of open communication. Make sure that during this time of open communication that you are being very truthful, very honest, very direct about what you have to say. Uh, because Mercury and Gemini can be a little, like, too, too talkative. I have some Gemini placements, so, mm -hmm. um, but it's also a great time to study philosophy, and it's also a, a great time to study any of those subjects that's just like, what does it all mean? What does it all mean? Indeed, what does it all mean? That's a good question. On the 17th, we have Saturn going retrograde in Pisces. Now, Saturn going retrograde in Pisces is different than Saturn being in Aquarius and going retrograde. Saturn going retrograde in Pisces is a fantastic time to do a past life reading. If you feel so inclined. You may not. It's definitely a time to, to do like your soul searching and shadow work. It's a time to rewind and look at those memories is it time for us to clean some of that up? Is it time for us to finally heal it and put it away? What is it we're trying to do? And it's definitely a time to listen to your intuition, to clear, like, to tidy up some of those, like, things that we've been carrying around. You know what I'm talking about. The memories that we've been carrying around of coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yeah. Um, and it's a wonderful time for you to sit back and say, what am I doing to make my life better? What am I doing to enrich my life? There's another thought provoking question, huh? And we're only halfway through the month. Yeah. Okay. So on the 18th, we have a new moon in Gemini and it also happens to be Father's Day. This is a perfect time to make plans for the future without having any kind of attachment to the outcome or to how those dreams, plans, or manifestations are going to come about. So if you're wishing for, I don't, I don't know, like a bigger house, or if you're wishing for a better car or more income or whatever it is that you're wishing for, you're wishing for um, inspiration for a writing project, whatever it is that you're wishing for, you, ha you have to sit back and go, okay, this is what I wish for, but I'm not going to put any stipulations on it. I'm not going to uh, be attached to the outcome, and I am not going to sit here and say it has to come about in this particular way because it doesn't. Let it go and let spirit see what they can bring to you. Be much better that way. On the 21st, um, we have the sun moving into Cancer, and we also have summer solstice. Oh, Jasmine's dreaming. Um, so we also have summer solstice. This is a wonderful day of celebration. This is just a fantastic day. It really is. Sun moving into Cancer. Again, it's a lot of intuition. Cancer is a very, very intuitive sign, so... It's a good time of the year. 
On the 26th, we have Mercury moving into Cancer. So we started out the month with Mercury in Taurus, then he moved into Gemini, and now he's moving into Cancer. So with Mercury in Cancer, be open to messages that Spirit brings to you. This is a great time to marry the intuition and the logic. Because Cancer is very, very intuitive. Cancer is a very intuitive sign. And Mercury is very logical. Communication, logic. Real cut and dry. So this is a wonderful time to marry the two. It's a wonderful time to bring those two together. This is also a time to implement listen to be understood instead of listen to respond. We've really gotten into that in, t in our society and especially online. We don't listen to understand. We listen to respond. This is a big deal. You'll see memes about it all over the place. So it's not like I created that. But listen to understand during this time. Practice that. It's a good time to practice that. On the 30th of June, we have Neptune going retrograde in Pisces. This is a wonderful time of reevaluation because the rose colored glasses of Neptune being direct have been ripped off. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Neptune is a planet of illusion, fantasy, we could even say. But the rose colored glasses are being removed when he goes retrograde. So, we look at relationships, finances, businesses. Um, we look at our dreams and plans in a different way. We look at them more with logic and we look at them much clearer than we have before. Then we've been really like putting our focus and intent on. Um, so our plans, like plans and like making lists or like making some real um, inroads into what we want to do replaces like that fantasy and action replaces the dreaminess. So this is a wonderful time to just really step in and say, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. And this is how I'm going to accomplish it. I love it. I really do. I'm excited about June. I truly am. I think this is a, just a fantastic month. And I'm not just saying that because I did see what my life path number is like looking like, but I know. You never know. I mean, it could all turn out to be crazy. I mean, it could. But I think this is going to be a wonderful month. I really, really do. And I've also been asked why I don't talk about, um, like, some of the aspects that we have, like the squares and the conjunctions and stuff, because it just, there's a lot of them out there, especially when you look at the moon. The moon goes through all 12 signs in 28 days. Comparatively, the sun and Mercury go through all 12 signs in a year. And Venus and Mars take almost two years to go through all 12 signs. The next closest one is Jupiter, and he takes 12 to 13 years to go through all 12 signs. It's a, it, there's a lot of aspects that we see, and when you see the planets that are camped out in things longer, so like Uranus is in the same sign for seven years, Saturn's in the same sign for like two and a half years, um, then we have... Um, Neptune, 14 years, and Pluto, every 12 to 31 years, he changes signs. So he's really in it to win it. You know what I'm saying? So when you see aspects happening with those signs, those are lengthy aspects. Because the moon and Mercury, they move so fast. They move so fast. So they're aspecting all the time, especially the moon. So I don't tend to cover that as much as I used to, like a long time ago. Um, when I had the weekly forecast with a, a partner of mine, but I do it a little differently now. So, and feel free to let me know all of you have metaphysical at gmail.com, or you can just drop a comment below and I'll, I promise you, I will read them. So, um, make sure you check out all of your monthly numerology. They're coming up next. And if you get, if you are a, um, remember if you're a master number, 11, 22, 33, or 44, make sure you check out the numbers that they, um, that they reduce down to as well. Yeah, just a little extra information. 
Thank you so much for joining me this month. Thank you so much for uh, for supporting me on my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm having so much fun. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful month of June. And until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye.